How's it going YouTube? This is Wake Run Collapse. I'm back for boxes number 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 of Japanese Ultra Dimensional Beasts. We're going to close out our double case opening of Sun and Moon 4 and hopefully get some great cards. As per the usual, make sure you hit the like button down below if you're looking forward to what you may see in this opening. If you're new to the channel, I do big openings like this all the time with every new set. We open a full case of each new set. That's 12 boxes for the Sun and Moon era. Uh, but I was doing 20 smaller boxes with the X and Y series as well. So there is tons, and I mean tons of content that I've done over the years. And I hope that you can find something back there that you can enjoy and perhaps subscribe for future openings as well. Just like we did in the last video, yes, because yesterday I did 150 packs of Awakened Heroes and got some great pulls there too, we're going to be opening the packs two at a time, and I'll only be sleeving full arts because this is in the name of respecting your time. Now, I could go absolutely mental through these, but I feel like it's better to, you know, not destroy some of the cards that we're doing. Uh, so this video will likely clock in around, I'd say, 50 or 52 minutes, something like that. And the first pack won't even open. Great start, self. So in our first double pack, we're going to pull a Regice Hollow. Now, I have, uh, I have opened seven boxes of this particular expansion that will become Crimson Invasion in November uh, on the channel already. Uh, so if you're looking for a slower opening, if you want a spoiler-free experience, start at the beginning and work your way up. And you'll see how I do in terms of progress for the entirety of the set. And there's a Hydreigon Hollow right there. Cutting the packs two at a time is probably going to shave eight to ten minutes off of this video, so... We're going to get our first GX. Yeah, it's a Gyarados GX. Very nice. In Awakened Heroes, we've got a really nice, even distribution throughout our five boxes of our GX cards. I'd love to experience the same thing here. So we've got Miltank, Shelmet, Houndour, Oranguru, a uh, Ravaged Plains, Diggersby, Magikarp, Kakuna, a Beware Hollow, and a Mamoswine. So if you're going to do double packs, uh, advice to you guys, uh, push the cards down. Seriously, push the cards down. Make sure that they're out of the way uh, because you can and will cut cards by doing this. And I have cut cards by doing this too. And even I am not perfect. Uh, but the good news is if you do cut a card, it's usually because you hit a card at the beginning or the end of the pack, which means it's a common or an uncommon that gets sacrificed to the Poke Gods. Scissors are having a tough time. They've been, they've gone through a lot of work over the past few years. Still the same set of scissors too. I haven't replaced them. Uh, nothing in those two packs. Uh, to kind of catch you guys up to speed, I've yet to pull a duplicate from Ultra Dimensional Beasts. Uh, so we're looking for uh, one super rare, two hyper rares, two ultra rares. There's a Xerneas Hollow, pretty cool. If I had to guess, I'm going to say that I'm done with Hyper Rares uh, for this particular expansion. I think I've pulled all the Hyper Rares I'm going to be getting, because I've gotten two already in Gyarados and Alolan Exeggutor. So I think that's probably going to be tapped out for that. Uh, but in terms of the other cards, uh, I'm still missing the Guzzlord uh, Super Rare. So obviously I'm missing the Hyper Rare as well. Um, and in terms of Ultra Rares, I'm missing the Ultra Rare Water Energy. And then there's another Trainer card that's eluding me that I know is an Ultra Rare. And if I pull it, it's going to be weird because I'm not expecting it. Hey, it's a Guzzlord. Wait, are we going to go full Wishy Washy? Are we going to pull another Guzzlord right here and now? Nah. I haven't even seen that yet, so I didn't think it was going to happen. It'd be funny if it did, though.
Oh, we didn't cut that pack enough. The old manual opening. So we got Swablu, Shelmet, Mistrevis, a Nihiligo GX, but it, it feels like we haven't pulled enough of these. Does it feel like that to you guys, too? What it feels like to me. Dash Pouch, Dano, Pile of Swine, Diggersby, Mammoth Swine, and Lusamine. So I think we're going to get a Guzzlord. I think we'll get another Lusamine. I think we'll get another Full Art Gyarados. I think we'll get another Full Art Exeggutor. And then I think we're going to get the Ultra Rare Water Energy. That's my prediction for these five boxes. If you guys have predictions as well, now, before we start pulling any of them, would be a fine time to pause the video and leave them in the comments and see just how right you were. There's another Beware Hollow. Ah, Wigglytuff cracks me up. So I'm holding on to a topic of conversation. I want to finish the first box because I know I'm going to get rambly. And I'm going to be talking about it for a while. So I'm going to try to save it and just have this be a pure opening for now. We still do, after all, need our full art from this box. So we've got Kakuna. Uh, Jangmo O, Pilus Swine, Reggie Rock, Sea of Decay, Stuffle, Diggersby, Houndour, My Lotakalo, and an Orangaroo. Again, like I mentioned before, if you're looking for a, uh, a shortened version, well, actually an elongated version where you can really look at the uh, at the cards and enjoy the artwork, then check out box number one of each set. But now that we're on box number eight out of the twelve box case, I really think that it's time to speed it up. Hey yo! Looks like I was wrong. <laughs> That's another hyper rare. It's Nihiligo GX Hyper Rare. Wow! That is my third hyper rare of this set in eight boxes. That's really peculiar. We have nailed it for this set. Uh, I'm gonna put you aside for a second so we can see the rest of the cards in here. And there's another Hydreigon Hollow there. Get back over here. And it's not a duplicate Hyper Rare either, which is encouraging. That means that the only Hyper Rare I'm missing, and will be missing, is Guzzlord. Which I don't think is all that expensive to pick up. Show that beautiful low light. I don't know if the cards look quite this way for English collectors. But I love the Japanese versions, and I always will. 57 out of 50, a hyper rare. That is just great. That is great. This one I will sleeve, for sure. It is a new card for the collection. I'm not messing around with it. That may be the first time out of these, uh, these 12 box cases that I've pulled three hyper rares from a single set. I think it's the first time I've done it. There's a Reg Ice. It would be absolutely wild if by some weird fluke I was able to pull the Guzzlord 2 and we completed the Hyper Rares. Uh, that would be amazing and I would happily forgo uh, pulling another Ultra Rare and having to buy the other two in order to, uh, to make that little moment happen. Last two packs of box number one are going to give off a Komo'o Hollow. Very cool. And do, 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 do. Let's get rid of box number one for a moment. There's a crack into box number two. The topic of conversation that was swimming around in my brain right before I sat down to film this. So there's been much ado about the NES Classic and much more recently the SNES Classic uh, that has uh, been hitting the market as of late. Uh, what did this come out last week or something like that? Uh, I 
just seen an ad on Facebook. Yes, I um, I occasionally do click an ad on Facebook, um, probably just out of habit because it's like, oh, uh, it says like the 21 games for the SNES Classic ranked. And I was kind of going through them because I have no idea what's on the SNES Classic. I can tell you that I played them as a kid um, because I possessed one because I'm old. Um, but I had no idea what games are on there. There's a Hydreigon Hollow. Good start to the first box. So I figured I'd tell you my story of um, my my getting enamored with some of these older games. Uh, in particular, the Final Fantasy series, which is something I've not been able to enjoy for myself in quite some time, and would love to rectify in the short term. Uh, so, when I was younger, um, I didn't play much in the way of, like, I guess you'd call them serious games. Uh, now, the timeline for me is a little bit fuzzy because I don't remember exactly when certain stuff was released in relation to other series. Uh, I know that we had a Super Nintendo. Um, I remember playing, and actually I remember purchasing Super Mario Kart. And that was a big deal for me because... I had to, you, you know, use birthday money and stuff like that to get it, but I played the hell out of that game. And for any of you who uh, are curious and might be playing Super Mario Kart for the SNES Classic, uh, I've got a... I don't know if this is well known, uh, because this is something my brother and I figured out well before the days of the internet and being able to look up and find out, hey, what crazy tricks can you pull on the, uh, on the computer? Uh, so if you play... Mario Circuit 2, not the first one, Mario Circuit 2, uh, there's a, and I'm doing this from memory, near the end of the lap, uh, there's like a, there's like a boost jump that you jump over, there's a few panels in a row, um, and you kind of jump over a section of the track that you had already passed through, you know, you, you take like a 270 degree turns to the right, and then you go over the track, you, you know, you hit the boost, you go over the track, you swing a little bit to the left, and there's a finish line. Uh, there's a particular section that if you leave a banana in between two of the boosts, it's exactly where the, uh, where the computer, that, where the AI is programmed to go. It's where they go over the track. They will spin out, they will end up between the boosts, and they will not have enough speed to make it over. And this on its own is funny enough, but on occasion, uh, they will learn this Oh, wow, there's our leucine. That is sick. Love getting another one of those. Beautiful card, that is. So simple. Doesn't need a lot of color. It just is what it is. It's green and yellow and white. It's silver on the borders. It's just, ah, oh, it's awesome. I love that I'm going to have one of these to sell. In a dash pouch. Uh, occasionally... For some reason, I don't know if the AI like learns it as the speed that it took to get over the jump in the first place, but it can keep the that particular player from being able to make the jump repeatedly, and you can get these like ridiculous uh, beatdowns in the game. I mean, obviously, Super Mario Kart is not a challenging game uh, by by any real means. I mean, it might have been to me when I was seven uh, to beat like 150 CC Special Cup or something. Uh, but you can take a race that you can finish in, like, a minute 50. Yeah. Um, and you can get the AI to finish in four minutes or seven minutes or not at all. You can get these, like, really weird things to happen. And I hope that that's still the case in the SNES Classic because that was, like, my favorite part of playing. That and mushrooming over Ghost Valley 3 and hitting that weird little ledge on the side. But anyways... That, that is to say that I was not a serious gamer at that age, and by no respect should I have been. Uh, I would play, you know, Mario games. I would play... What would I play? We had NBA Live 95. I remember that. I remember uh, revoking the out-of-bounds rule and going behind the backboard and shooting it over and over again up against the backboard uh, so that I could have a player collect a ridiculous amount of rebounds just for fun. Uh, we had Quarterback Club 96, and then I started seeing ads. And by ads, I mean I didn't have the internet yet. I didn't have a computer yet in the house. 
uh, this is 1997, uh, I started seeing ads for a game called Final Fantasy VII. And this is where things get weird. This is something I would never consider to be a possibility now that I'm older. Uh, but it was very much my reality as a kid. So I saw commercials for it. It looked amazing, and the commercials were actually a little bit sarcastic because uh, they made it seem like it was a movie, and they said, oh, you know, and uh, the greatest thing about this is that it will never come to a big screen near you, and it's like Final Fantasy VII and stuff. Uh, and I remember thinking it looked amazing, and seeing magazine ads for it and thinking it looked amazing, but I never equated that with I should go and buy it now because it looks good and I want to play it when it comes out. That was something that never, ever crossed my mind. In fact, I did not get turned on to the game until I was sleeping over at a friend's house and he was playing it, and I started a new file and played until I don't even know what time in the morning, because I was so enamored with the idea that you could have these characters, this fleshed out world, all these things that were happening. Uh, and to this day, you know, correctly or otherwise, FF7 is my favorite game. It's always going to be, it's solidified at this point. And then things got odd. For Final Fantasy. Uh, like, on the side, I'll, I'll briefly mention this, there were other games that I played a lot. Obviously, I played a lot of Pokemon as a kid. Uh, in 99, I got myself a Game Boy Pocket in Pokemon Red because I had a class that was intermingled. I was at, like an 8th grader in high school because back then 8th graders went to high school in our in our town. And I would, um, I would see a lot of like the 10th graders and 11th graders playing Pokemon at the time, and this is my way to kind of connect with them. And I actually ended up making friends through this. Uh, so, that started my saga with Pokemon, and obviously I'm still with it. But I play other games too, like Perfect Dark. I got a lot of play on Perfect Dark. I remember doing a ridiculous thing with Remote Mines and 8 Meat Sims uh, that got like a perpetual explosion going on in their home base and I was able to get like 10,000 kills in a single match. But after FF7, uh, I think I had Super Mario RPG, which was another game that I was interested in but never thought to purchase ahead of time. I waited till I saw a friend play it, I played it for myself and loved it, and then I got it for myself. Uh, this didn't, you know, this kind of went back and forth for a little bit. Uh, I would be interested in a game, I wouldn't purchase it, or it'd get purchased for me. Uh, like for instance, um, I got interested in FF8, I saw some FF8, I think I played a demo of FF8, and it ended up buying it used at like Funko Land or something like that. I don't know if that's a national thing or even was ever, uh, but I remember buying it used and then when I played through the game, I never finished it. As a matter of fact, I started it a few years ago again and I was too frustrated with the gameplay to make it past the first disc. Now one day I would like to play it all the way through and beat it, but that is not high on my list of priorities. Don't like the draw system. Found some of the characters anime level annoying too, but that's that's another thing. Uh, and then I had uh, I had FF9 purchased for me for my birth, not for my birthday, for Christmas. Uh, my parents got me FF9 for Christmas. Uh, because they knew how much time I played uh, with FF7 and they wanted me to give 9 a shot. And again, it was something I'd just not considered purchasing for myself. And I played 9, and I loved 9, because when you play 9, you love 9. I'm, I'm just kidding. You, you're entitled to not like FF9 if you don't want to like it, or if you don't enjoy it. Then that's, that's perfectly fine, but... I'll tell you what, if... In a different world, this channel never would have happened, and I would just replay my favorite Final Fantasy games over and over again every year. But then the tide turned with 10. Uh, 10 I, again, never considered really buying, but I had a friend who had, like, a bunch of GameStop credit, and I was hanging out with him one day, and he's like, so I bought FF10 because my credit was going to expire at the end of the year or something like that, so I purchased it. By the way, we're on the third box. Um, so I purchased it, but... 
I don't have any real interest in it. I was like, dude, I'll buy it off of you. And then I bought it off of my friend. And from then on, I learned the, the virtue of, you know, learning about games, seeking out games. Because we had the internet. I was able to research stuff like that. And I started to get, you know, hyped for games. Uh, I bought 10.2 when it came out. Um, FF12, I remember having been, you know, somewhat interested in, but not so much. Oh, do we have a card that's stuck in there? Yeah, we do. Get him out of there. Uh, I remember being interested in FF12, but kind of had lost it off my radar because the last Final Fantasy game had been, ooh, Lolan Exeggutor GX. That was not the last Final Fantasy game. Had been 11, and that was the MMORPG, which I had no interest in. Uh, and I remember, you know, being interested in 12, but not really seeking out its release date until I found it in a Circuit City flyer one morning. I was like, hey, that comes out today. I look at my brother. This was in college at the time. I looked at my brother, and I was like, so you want to go to Circuit City? It's like, yeah, why? What's going on? It's like, I just saw in the flyer that Final Fantasy 12 comes out today and if they have it i'm just gonna buy it he's like all right i'll look and see if i can find a movie so we drove the 15 minutes to circuit city i bought ff12 i brought it home and played it uh 13 i got crazy hyped for uh i remember all the marketing material and how gorgeous everything looked and how cheese ball their names are and the storyline was and i really do like that game i will defend it I will defend it. And 13.2 as well. And then after 13.2, a curious thing happened. Because I had already played, um, I played FF1 a few years back as well, just to enjoy the original Final Fantasy. But after 13.2, I mean, I platted the game in probably two weeks, which is really unhealthy. Uh, but I, I desired something else. I think we're about to get a good card. Uh, I desired something else, so I decided to go back, and here's where the story goes full circle, I decided to go back and play FF6. Now, Final Fantasy VI annoys me because of how good it is. I have this these set preconceived notions of what my favorite Final Fantasy game is, and that will never change, but to see so many of the building blocks for the rest of the series appear here, but for it still to have this incredible story all on its own, there's an Ilego. That's cool. Uh, really busted up some of my notions of uh, of what would happen. Two out of three predictions so far. Not bad. Got the full art of Lolan Exeggutor. That's the second one of those. And the counter energy. It really busted up my preconceived notions of uh, seven is the best game. Seven was super groundbreaking. Everything seven, seven, seven. Uh, but, you know, that's not the case because... Even some of the music and some of the plot themes and elements and stuff came from 6. Now, I have more respect for 6 as a game and as an achievement of video game storytelling than anything else. And I would still much rather play 7 if given the option, because I found that more playable for me, and I enjoy the experience more. It's more nostalgic for me. It goes back 20 years now. In fact, I think we just hit the 20th anniversary of its release in North America. Is that September 1997? Like, early in the month, like the 7th or the 9th or something? In any event, that's my story with Final Fantasy. Also, I purchased FF15. I had it pre-ordered. I never played it. I purchased FF10, uh, like the remaster, for PS3 and didn't play it. And then I repurchased it for PS4 and didn't play it. And then I purchased FF12 for PS4 and never played it. So now I've got 10, 10 2, 12, 15, and the uh, PS4 red uh, redone, um, like trophy supported 7 and 9, all to play. So if I ever disappear for three months, that might be why. <laughs> oh, come on. There we go. I just love the games. And I'd love to hear what you guys have. What were your maybe your experiences with your, your favorite franchises? I'm, I'm sure a lot of you 
maybe not all of you, but a lot of you at some point or another played the Pokemon games. A lot of you probably played another series somewhere along the lines. Uh, maybe there are newer series like, um, like maybe you played the Dark Souls games. Maybe you played, uh, what is the other one? Um, Uncharted, Assassin's Creed, that kind of stuff. Uh, for myself, I knew, ooh, yeah, I knew uh, precisely when I was no longer a threat to be a gamer for every type of game. When I played Killzone 3, and I couldn't see what was going on. Because <laughs> things were happening so fast and in such high definition that my, like, my eyes couldn't keep up. And that's when I knew that I was only going to like the types of games that I liked pretty much forever. I mean, Pokemon I've gone back and forth on a lot. I played Red a ton. I played Silver a ridiculous amount, like 350 hours. I actually just recently checked, and there was power to my Game Boy, but I could no, I had lost my save file on Silver, um, because the, I don't know, is it the internal cartridge battery that saves it, uh, like, craps its pants or something? Uh, didn't play third gen. Uh, played Pokemon Pearl. I played, which version of Black and White? I don't remember which version of black and white I played. I think it played Pokemon Black. And then I played X. And then I tried to play um, Omega Ruby, but lost track of it. Then I tried to play uh, Pokemon Moon and lost track of it. And I'm pretty sure I'm not even going to bother trying to buy Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon because I'm so far behind on the other games. I'd love to build a living Dex and play all the 6th gen games and play them through and play all the 7th gen games and, and get me some legendaries and stuff, but right now I gotta stick with the games that are nostalgic for me the most, that are, that are the best experiences for me that I think that I'm missing out on, and that is to go back and play a couple of Final Fantasy games before I tackle anything else. Wow, guys, and just like that, we're three boxes down. Need a sip of water. Hold on. Just like that, three boxes down. All right. Just got to stretch the body. All right, let's dig in. Box number 11 of the case, box number 4 of the video, packs numbered 91 through 120. If I can even get into this. Why Why you no cut? What, 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 is, what is going on? I'm slicing the box, but not the plastic wrap around it. There we go. Look at that. That thing is chewed up. Guzzlord, you're starting to make me nervous. I don't want to have one of these Sil Valley moments where I've got to buy you. Just be my friend. Just be my friend. So moving on, you know what, I can move those back there, I think, now. Uh, we got Stuffle, Kakuna, Bunnelby, Sea of Decay, Primeape, a Piloswine, Jengmo O, Weedle, Hydreigon Hollow, and a Wigglytuff. So we finished the last box with a Hydreigon Hollow, and we're starting this one with one. Now we've got Houndour. Selgor, Mistrevis, Houndoom, Mamoswine, Dano, Shelmet, Miltank, Nihiligo GX, and a Ravaged Plains. So to recap, the only super rare we're missing is Guzzlord. The only hyper rare we're missing is Guzzlord. <laughs> Why are you not going to be my friend? 
and then we need the two ultra rares as well. So if we do pull the super rare Guzzlord, then we're only missing three cards from the set, which, given the circumstances, I think is pretty darn good. I mean, I'm missing three hyper rares from Awakened Heroes, right? Yeah, because I think I only pulled the Kartana. Uh, but the overall success of this set helps to balance that out a lot. There's a Xerneas Hollow. Uh, also benefiting me is the fact that I've pulled a lot of the um, pricier cards, too. Like, if I were missing a Lusamine at this point and had two Guzzlords, like, I'd be stoked because I'd have two Guzzlords, but I'd be scared because of the financial burden of having to purchase a Lusamine. I didn't get anything right. Yeah, it was just a piece of pack, I was pretty sure. Uh, and I've also been pretty fortunate with the, uh, with the Ultra Rares, with the Golden Cards. We are about to pull an Alolan Executor GX in the next pack. Not in what I have here, the next pack. So, like, the fourth card is going to be a Lolan Exeggutor GX. You ready? Mistrevis, Dano. Ah, oh, I tried. It's worth a shot. Oh, it's a Gyarados Full Art. Uh, so, three out of five. Now, my predictions, I said Gyarados, Lusamine, Exeggutor, uh, Guzzlord, and then I had said the Ultra Rare Water Energy. So, predictions are going pretty well so far. Unfortunately, now I only have one more shot to pull a big Guzzlord. My big boy. Ah, I really hope I do it. I'll be bummed if I don't. I'll be bummed if I don't. If I don't pull a new card of some kind, I'll be bummed. So, we've got our Full Art Gyarados. So, at least the pulls have exhibited a lot more variety. Uh, this time around, uh, versus what we experienced uh, yesterday. <laughs> so we pulled two copies of two different full arts, and then we had an ultra rare. Which was not the best way to finish things out. So, getting this variety is pretty, pretty solid. And even the hyper rare I didn't pull in a super rare form either, so... And I got Miltank, Magikarp... Houndour, Komo'o, Beedrill, Phoebus, Swablu, Pikachu, Lusamine, and Zvilus. Actually, put those down there, and I probably shouldn't have. So now we can just use that as padding. I got antsy and cleaned the place up. Don't judge me for my cleanliness. Or lack thereof. So we got Grumpig, Mankey, Jigglypuff, Regice, Regirock, oh, 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 Pilot Swine, <laughs> just kidding, Jangmo, oh, a uh, bunch of other mons. My brain forgot how to brain there for a second. Last time we had one more shot to pull the Sil Valley and we were disappointed. This time we've got one more shot to pull the Guzzlord. Can we make it happen in the last box? I sure hope so. P.S. Not that anyone cares, but I have a really goofy work shift today. Uh, once a month on a Saturday night, I've got to work 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. And that is unfortunately tonight. Uh, I'm used to working 7 to 5s. Uh, I work like 7 to 5 or 8 to 5, and then one night a week I'll work 11 to 8. Uh, because I'm expected to, you know, do a night to offset the uh, the burden for other people, which I'm perfectly fine with, and I don't mind doing it. It helps change things up for me, too. Uh, but the 2 to 11 is difficult. Not because I get tired at work, but because I'm wired by the time I get home. Like, I guarantee I will not fall asleep before 1 a.m. tonight. There is no possible chance of that happening. And in preparation for that, I actually stayed up until, like, 12.30, 12.45 last night, just because I knew that that was going to happen, and I wanted to get a little bit of sleep if I could. But then next Saturday, I got to work at 5 a.m., so... 
At least they're not back to back days. That would hurt. I would. I think I would just sleep there. Change my shirt and just be done with it. A Weedle, Phoebus, Miltank, Xerneas, Magius, Execute, Mankey, Dano, Svilus, and a Sea of Decay. I think two more double packs for this box. And that will finish it up. Got Magikarp, Grumpig, Swinub, Wigglytuff, Mamoswine, Jangmo O, Spoink, Bunnelby, Milotic Hollow, and a Dash Pouch. And this is going to close out box number four of the opening. These are packs number 119 and 120. And we've got a Kakuna, Mistrevis, Stuffle, uh, Hakamo O. I always get tripped up on that one. I don't know why. Uh, Ravaged Plains, a Selgor, Pikachu, Jigglypuff, a Guzzlord, a GX, and an Oranguru. Okay, guys, it all comes down to this. Will we get a new card in the last box? I'm certainly hopeful that we will. I'm certainly hopeful. He just looks so hungry. He looks so hungry. How could we possibly? <laughs> As we dig into our final box of Sun and Moon 4, a set that we are unlikely to revisit for any reason anytime soon, unless we're just, we get some packs bundled in with some stuff. I gotta say, I do like the artwork for Sun and Moon 4. I do enjoy it. I like that they included the Ultra Beasts without, you know, completely discounting everything else that could possibly be in this set. A GX in the second pack, how about that? So it's, it's cool that they had Gyarados and Exeggutor and Golem and, uh, in these sets. Uh, and then um, some other interesting choices as well. Uh, I can tell you right now that I am locked in at least through Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon for Japanese collecting. Hey, we did it! <laughs> it's my boy in a rainbow rare, hyper rare, super shiny, whatever you want to call it. I've got it. Oh, baby. That is something special. I'm going to move him over for just a tick. How it is that I pulled all four hyper rares in this case blows my mind. How did that even happen? It's funny because in the, um, in Awakened Heroes, I didn't pull either Sil Valley, uh, because I only pulled one Hyper Rare, but in this one I pulled all four. What a great case. <laughs> what a great case. And oh, I'm so stoked to have this card. means I really don't mind having to buy the super rare version because this one is definitely going to be pricier. So I think I won't struggle quite as much to find it. 58 out of 50 HR. Eating all the colors of the rainbow. An appetite impossible to satisfy. It's your boy Guzzlord. <sighs> what a nice moment. What a nice moment. I'm glad you guys stuck around for it if you're still watching. I'm really glad that you were here for it. I mean, I am going to hit you guys with a recap at the end, so... Uh, I am still going to, obviously, open these packs on camera. I would never do something so sacrilegious as to not do that. 
I'm looking at you, everyone who posts to Twitter and says, why do I ever open packs off camera? Yeah, why do you ever open packs off camera? That's why I open everything on camera. So now we've got a Diggersby, Magikarp, Kakuna, uh, Ravaged Plains, and some other friends, including that Red Ice Hollow. So now it's going to be my responsibility for the rest of the weekend, uh, not only to work, not only to do some other stuff, but I also have to figure out how to put this sale video together. So I'm thinking Monday would be the best time to post it, so that's tomorrow. Uh, but I have to check my work obligations and schedule first. I've got to be able to do that. Uh, so Monday, sometime Monday is the plan, but I don't know exactly. I also have to figure out pricing and availability for a lot of these cards. So I've got to go through, uh, sort everything through. I have to remember to include those um, shiny Sil Valley hollows from the promo opening too. There's a Gyarados. Gotta remember to do that. Not that I've got any shiny GXs to sell, but still. And then I gotta price stuff. Ooh, I gotta price stuff. That can be a challenge to get right, but I think I'm getting more used to it now. I think I'm getting a better understanding of you know, what people are interested in, what is considered fair market value. Because I've never been one to gouge people. But I also have to consider, you know, I bought all this stuff. I need to make sure, make sure we take care of it. So we are officially 90% of the way through the opening. And unless this is an error box of some kind, we are not going to see any more full arts, no more new cards. But we are closing things out uh, in pretty darn good shape for Ultra Dimensional Beasts. I need one Super Rare, no Hyper Rares, and two Ultra Rares. And I do not need the Counter Energy Ultra Rare, which is like a huge deal. It's a huge deal. Plus, in the sale video, which again, it's important to mention, I don't take reservations for, I can't hold cards for people, it's just first come, first serve whenever it goes live, and it may not go live when most of my videos go live. So you can't, you can't plan on the time, you just have to, you know, look for it, enable your notifications, hopefully you're, you know, quick enough, but also know that if you're listening to this, it's important to know, uh, I will not price something that is so good that it blows the pricing of everywhere else out of the water because then I'm leaving money on the table. Uh, so if you miss out on an opportunity to purchase a card from me, it's not like you're going to be paying double somewhere else. Simply not what I'm about. And as we finish out the remainder of the box, get a Nihiligo GX, pretty cool. So we finish out the remainder of the box. I gotta say, it has been a nice experience. It's been dire at times to actually film these videos. It's been uh, it's been tough. I haven't been terribly motivated uh, from time to time to actually sit down and knock these out. Uh, I feel like the games were not of as high quality or creativity as they have been in the past. Uh, but overall, I think the fact that we were able to finish this up in a reasonable time frame makes it successful. Because what is today that you're watching this? October 1st? And then, like, really soon GX Battle Boost comes out? <laughs> it's about as well as we could have done. And here we have it, folks, our final two packs of Sun and Moon 4 for the double case opening. A total of 718 packs have been opened on the channel so far for Sun and Moon 4, and these are the final two. And we've got a Phoebus, Swablu, Pyloswine, Counter Energy, Wigglytuff, 
Houndour, Shelmet, Grumpig, a Primeape, and the final card is an Alolan Raichu Hollow. All right, so you're going to see a quick cut to the video while I um, go through everything, kind of sort it out, see what our overall pull ratios were and end up being. And after the cut, I'll be right back with a recap for you. Alrighty guys, the sorting has been done. As we did before, we're going to rifle through the holographic cards really quickly without showing them being sorted as they have not been. Uh, but we did get a total of 55 holographic cards from this particular opening. I think we got 54 in, in Awakened Heroes because we did pull one additional GX out of one of those boxes. Uh, so in the other one, in the other recap, we had 16 GXs. In this one, we have 15, which is actually the expected pull ratio for each box. 15, 5 boxes, so 3 regular GXs per box. So we did manage to get 4 copies of the Gyarados GX. We did get Nihiligo in all 5 boxes, so that was pretty cool. Guzzlord appeared in 4 boxes in its regular GX form. And only two Alolan Executor GXs, probably on account of how much card space the neck takes up. So let's slide that over there. And the five full arts, hyper rares, etc. that we pulled in the opening were a full art Gyarados, a full art Alolan Executor, a full art Lusamine, a hyper rare Nihiligo, and a hyper rare Guzzlord. Guys, it's been a real pleasure to make these videos for you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that they provide some sort of level of entertainment or comfort or whatever to you, something that you can find enjoyable. Uh, I find it comforting to film these videos and actually put them out uh, because it makes me feel accomplished once they're finished and also to get that positive feedback from you. So if you're able to hit the like button down below, if you've not already done so, it would make a great make a great deal of difference uh, for me. Uh, I will be posting the sale video uh, soon, a Monday, probably, Tuesday, possibly, if I don't manage to get it done, uh, but I think I will. And we'll kind of figure things out from there. Uh, thank you again for watching. Thank you for your support. And I will see you guys in the next video.